Vibe coding is pretty hot right now and Agentic AI, as you have seen from our past videos and other content across the web, it is quite impressive. It can be good, it can be bad. Should you be using it entirely on its own? That's up for discussion, but using it nonetheless can be helpful. And I wanna share with you another Agentic AI coding pair programming tool that you can use that's been around a lot longer in terms of Agentic AI than things like Claude Code, which was just announced recently. And then the addition to GitHub Copilot where it has this Agentic mode. This tool I'm talking about is called Aider. If you head on over to Aider.chat, that's A-I-D-E-R.chat. Let me show you real quick, actually. Bam. You're gonna see that Aider is expected to be an AI pair programming tool in your terminal. And it lets you use LLMs and interact with LLMs to either start new projects or build upon your existing ones. Aider is similar to Claude Code, or rather Claude Code is similar to Aider in that they are terminal-based agentic AI tools that you can use, as you can see in this animation here behind me. But let's talk about some of the features that makes it stand out a bit more from things like Claude Code and GitHub Copilot agentic mode. If we scroll down, we take a look at the features. You can use cloud and local LLMs, which is a huge differentiator in this regard because the other ones are limited to specific models that you can use. Claude Code, all the anthropic models that they offer, like Claude Sonnet and all that stuff. And then you have GitHub Copilot, which gives you some more flexibility than Claude Code, but not as much as Aider here. The big differentiator with Aider here is that it has more flexibility in the models you can use with it compared to some of the other agentic tools. In this case, you can use the ones that are well known like Claude, Sonnet, DeepSeek, OpenAI, that sort of thing. Or you can use more local models and free models locally if you'd like to. If we click through on this cloud and local LLMs feature, we can scroll through here and we can see the best models that they suggests that it works best with this DeepSeek, Claude 3.7 Sonnet, or OpenAI 01, 03 Mini, and so forth, right? But if you want to go the free route, you can use Google Gemini 1.5 Pro, you can use Llama 370B on Grok, or the Command R Plus model, which a lot of these I'm not familiar with. And if you're interested in videos on that and us exploring more, let us know in the comments below. But if you have a specific model that you like to use and you want to understand how to leverage it within Aider, you can find out more in this connecting to LLMs documentation on the Aider website. Getting back to the features of Aider, you can do things like map your code base. You can use it with 100 plus code languages, which is fantastic to see. I think that's pretty on par with some of the other models too. You have Git integration. You can use it in your IDE. You can add images and web pages to the chat to provide visual context, screenshots, and reference docs, et cetera, to help out the models that you're interacting with. Voice to code, linting and testing, and then copy and paste to web chat if you'd like. All right, enough jibber jabber. Let's get into getting started. Uh, looks like you just have to do a Python install. If you're not familiar with Python, that's okay because you just run Python hyphen M pip install. We'll just copy paste, copy pasta, right? All right, so after we do the install, we tell Ader which model to use. In this case, being that other videos we've done, we've seen results with DeepSeek, Sonnet, O3 Mini, that sort of thing. We're gonna try a different one that I've never used before called Cohere and see how it does, what the output is like, and the experience with Aider. All right, so as I mentioned, we're gonna use Cohere, so I'm gonna run this command first. I'm gonna copy that, head on over to my project. We're gonna be using, if you've been following along with our other videos, we're gonna be using the same repository called AI Code Security, and I'll put everything in a separate folder form from this video so you can follow along if you'd like and test it out there. But in the terminal, I'm gonna run Python install Aider chat. And you might notice I am working within a GitHub code space as well, so that it's all isolated in this cloud development environment and not on my local machine, that type of thing. And we can see Aider is getting set up installed in here. So let's give that a moment and then we'll come back. All right, it took a couple minutes, but Aider is all installed and set up. And now the next step is we need to get the API key for Cohere. So I'm gonna go do that and then I'll come back and let you know how that goes. All right, and I'm back. So what I did was I went to the documentation Cohere in Aider chat and then clicked on this. You'll need a Cohere API key, which opened up a new tab. You sign up, I signed up with GitHub and then it brings you to this dashboard. Then what you wanna do is get an API key. What's nice is they have a free trial you can use to just test this out and see how things go. So you click on API keys here, which I'm not going to right now because it reveals it. You can copy the value from there and then follow these steps where depending on your operating system you're running on, if it's Mac and Linux, you're gonna run export give it a name of cohere underscore API 
underscore key and set the value equal to the value you copied. And then if it's windows, you're going to do set X. Okay. That's the difference there. So I'm up to this next step here where I'm going to set the model in Ader this way. So I'm copying that. I'm going to go back over to VS code in this GitHub code space, send that in Ader. You can skip this check with no git ignore add dot Ader to yes, we want to do that for sure. Now it's asking, would you like to see what's new in this version? No, we'll, we'll figure it out. All right. So in setting up Ader, it looks like it created an Ader input history file, a chat history markdown file, and then some type of cache with some database. Keep track of things here all running locally, but it automatically set up or updated. Remember it prompted me earlier to add these things to my Git ignore. So I'm not committing those to my repository. Now, taking a quick look at usage of Ader, what I was confused by before is really it was actually ready to start prompting it. When it has that little greater than symbol, it's ready for you to enter in your prompt and ask it to do things like make code changes or edit files and that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a separate folder for this so that we can keep track of all the changes that it's made and we can commit it to the repository for all of you to review it later on if you'd like. All right, so I'm going to spin up Ader now. I'm going to tell it to use the model command R plus in that date version of it and the green line will show it's starting to do things and we have the little greater than carrot to indicate it's ready for us to prompt it so i'm going to tell it since i like to keep these things isolated to their own folders in this repository let's see if it can make a directory please make a new directory for my project and call it uh, ader cohere and it's the command R model, right? So then it's wanting to create a new file, even though it's really a folder. I'm going to say yes. It's prompting me to do that there in the bottom left. And we can see something happened. It did create something, but it was a file and not a folder. It would have been quicker for me to just make it myself. So I'm going to do that now. All right. So now that I created that folder, I'm going to change directories into it. We're going to say Ader cohere clear. And then I'm going to run the Ader command again, telling you what model to use. All right, we're going to keep things fair with the experimentations with other models and tools out there and give it the same exact prompt. So we're going to ask Ader with this model to please create a simple Node.js web app that allows create, update, delete of notes. We want to make sure it's secure. If you've been watching our past videos, you know, if you want the prompt, it'll be listed in the repository readme. You can understand further, but to save some time, I'm going to send this and see what it does. Holy cow. It is doing a lot. It seems it is going fast way faster than the other ones, I think. All right, so it has a package JSON. It wants to add file to the chat. Yeah, sure, go ahead. You wanna add that there. Tokens used, 6.6 .6 cent, 6,000 that is sent, 200, whoa, 261 received. Ensure your project is well-structured, documented. Eh, let me know if you need further assistance. You can use slash undo to undo and discard each Ader commit. So that's the other thing to take note with this. Any of the changes that Ader is making, it's making commits along the way. So if we look here, we have the git ignore, but then we also have, no, it didn't do that. Where are these commits happening? I wonder what did it add into this folder? Let's open it up and see. There's nothing. Maybe, oh, I need to tell it to commit maybe. That's it. So this is really cool. It's adding commit messages and stuff. Oh, it committed those for me. Oh boy. Okay. Do diff editor, editor model exit help. Let's do help. Let's see what happens with help. Add files to the chat so Ader can edit them or review them in detail. Architect. Enter architecture slash editor mode using two different models. If no prompt provided, switches to architect slash editor mode. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to tell it to code. Okay. We're going to say code and then I'm going to paste this in. I see all the code it's making and the files it's trying to create. Yes. Go for it. It's interesting that it only prompts me for one of the files and not. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Ooh, it's not doing it in the correct folder though. All right, so what I did is I reopened Visual Studio Code in just that folder that we made for Ader so it doesn't get confused by that. I think I might be doing something wrong, but hopefully this helps isolate it further. And I'm gonna rerun Ader with that model and start over. In chat file names are always relative to the Git working directory, not the current working directory. Okay, so that's what I missed before. Oops. All right, so what I'm learning through this is that Ader is super powerful and has a lot of custom capabilities built into it. However, it can be quite overwhelming and a bit cumbersome or, or complex to learn about it. And the learning curve can be kind of steep trying to figure out how to get it to work in the way that you expect it to and behave in the way you expect it to. In comparison or, or contrast to that rather, Claude code was way more simple and like handled a lot of setting up 
on its own than what I'm seeing here in eight or so far. So just a quick note on that for anybody that's watching me struggle through this a little bit as a first time user of Ader and trying this out. All right, so I'm at a loss in terms of like getting into just default to this current working directory instead of the Git working directory. I guess this is a specific problem to me, but if you're working in a mono repo, this might be something you run into as well, where you have multiple projects within the same repository or Git repository and the Git tracking is at the root of that whole repository. You're gonna run into this issue as well. I'm gonna copy paste the prompt. We're going to do that. Make sure to use the current working directory of, and let's copy that workspaces, blah, 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 and only make changes within that directory. Let's see what happens. I got to say it's so fast. It's, I'm, I'm very impressed with that. I just am scared as to what it's doing. All right. We're adding a file to the chat. So the other thing I'm learning here is it seems like this chat is the context that all the changes are happening. So it's happening like in memory, if you will, until I tell it to like commit the changes or ex save the changes. Right. But here's the thing. Look now, look, I told it what directory to focus on. Right. And it's telling me it wants to make changes to chat GPT 4.0 routes. So no, I don't want to do that. Let's go back to the top and see what's going wrong here. File listings. We got a package JSON. Here's the contents of the package JSON. Here's the server. There's code for the server. Here's the notes.js file. Then it tells me the security measures it took here. So it has helmet, right? Cores, input validation, UUIDs, rate limiting, HTTPS. Uh, we want to replace the in-memory store. We want to use environment variables for sensitive data like credentials, implement authentication authorization if needed using JWT or OAuth, and then regularly update dependencies to patch security vulnerabilities. All good stuff to see coming from it. And that all took 7,500 tokens sent to it when we received 1.2 thousand and it cost about three cents. So not bad. So I, you know what? I'm going to say no, 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 no. And the package JSON file, no. Directory structure, create new file. What does that mean? All right. So it looks like this is kind of a known issue in Ader where you're supposed to be able to use subtree only to exclude repo content outside of the current working directory, CWD. However, while that was implemented and is available here, it does not work as this individual Greg ID reports when they're trying to within a mono repo, just work within one folder and have new files and things like that created in that folder. Ader does not recognize that and still creates files outside of the context of the current working directory. So this seems to be something that's going on with it, uh, but maybe it'll get fixed in a future version of Ader, but for now, what I'm going to do to get past this is just create a separate repo that will reference from that folder that I put in the AI code security repository. So you can check that out that way. So I will be right back with a new repository and environment to use Ader in. All right. At this point, I created a whole new repository and isolated environment even further so that it's not in the mono repo and we don't run into those issues with Ader. And so I set it all up, did the install of Ader again in this code space, added my API key or the Cohere API key. And now we're gonna open up Ader using this model. Now I'm gonna give it the prompts that we give to all of the models that we've done in the past videos, paste that in there, create a simple node app, make it secure. Let's see what it does. A lot of what we saw before, but now in the proper location. All right, so it wants to create an app.js file. Yes, enter. Models note.js file. Yes, enter. Okay, and now we can see above me all that stuff actually executing. Uh, it's creating a controllers directory with a note controller, uh, it's skipping edits to env that matches git ignore spec. Okay. Create a package JSON file. It did everything it needed to. Let's check out the code. We got app JS using express mongoose helmet, express the rate limit cores. That's good to see no helmet. Oh, there's helmet. How did I miss that? I overlooked it. There's helmet. That's good with just default stuff. Okay. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. Default settings on that one. Uh, cores with some example domain to use or origin rather rate limiting. Good to see MongoDB connection and all that fun stuff. Excellent. Excellent. Then in terms of models, we got the note model. It's going to have a title content created and updated at fairly straightforward. And then in controllers, we got the note controller. This will create a note, update a note. It's doing all our CRUD operations, right? Excellent. In terms of the route setup, we got a post route to create a note, a put route to update a note based on ID, delete based on ID. And then you can get all the notes using all of that that's exported from the note controller, like create note, update note and all that fun stuff. Awesome. Okay. So it built out something. 
not crazy robust and having a lot of functionality and things implemented here like we've seen from other models but not too bad next thing we need to do is test the security of it at this point we did a quick overview and check of the code that was generated by Ader using this cohere command r plus model and now what i want to do is leverage sneak to give us a little bit more in depth of a scan a security scan for our, our open source dependencies and the code that was generated here so in terms of the packages that we're using they all seem fine to me but i'm going to use sneak to double check that there aren't any vulnerabilities found in those with the sneak open source the way i do that is i've added the sneak extension in visual studio code here i've signed into my sneak account and i could come over here and i could click on the rescan option here which is going to scan my npm dependencies after i run npm install that is so you have to do that first and that way you can see all the versions and everything and the whole dependency tree that's needed for all of these direct dependencies here and then in addition to that it scanned the code security and we can see everything came back no issues found for open source security code security and if we were using infrastructure as code that would be here as well and last but not least is code quality which is a nice added benefit to let us know of any you know bad patterns coding patterns that we might be using in this ai generated code but this seems to be pretty good with that what's my impression on this and what's your impression on this let me know in the comments below but how i'm feeling right now is that i need to give ader more of a fair chance by using some of the other models that are available to use through it and getting more familiar with how to leverage ader in the best possible way as this ai pair programming tool for me and my projects that i'm working on so Right now, I'm kind of like eh about it because the other agentic coding tools are way more simpler to get started and up and running and using immediately. Whereas Ader takes a little bit more of a steeper learning curve to get familiar with it, I think. And I don't feel like I'm using it properly just yet. So with that, let me know in the comments below what you think. Have you tried out Ader? What am I doing wrong? What should I try out within Ader? What models should I take a look at? Let me know in the comments below. But that does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with somebody who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding, everyone.